Hello there everybody, this is Vocio here, and welcome to my thoughts on the Dark Souls 3 trailer. So in this video I'm going to be talking a bit about the new trailer that came out recently, uh, you know, with my thoughts on the stuff in the trailer. Not all of it, because I don't have ideas for everything, <laughs> uh, but a few things, and also speculation about the final game based on the trailer that we saw. So, and, and also guys, I, uh, I know it sucks. But I just, I can't just, annoyingly, you know, I can't just, like, use a trailer and talk over it because I don't have the ability to get that footage. Not with it looking good, anyway, you know. I have to, like, hold my phone up to the fucking screen and record it on there and then, yeah, fuck that. Um, so, I'm, I'm gonna be using Dark Souls 2 gameplay footage to talk over it, um, talk over about it. Blah, 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 blah. So, first of all, uh, the opening of the trailer makes, it, it looks really interesting. Obviously, you know, the, the, uh... The new land we're in is called Lothric, which is a pretty cool name. And looking at it, you know, the the the, uh, the skies are grey. There's no colour anywhere. It really reminds me of the opening of Dark Souls 1, you know, when the dragons were the rules of the world. And it seems like the world is starting to move back towards that stage. Maybe. Or maybe not. Um, I'm not, you know, because the thing is, I'm not really sure about all this stuff. One thing I do know is, you know, after the ending of Dark Souls 2... Uh, obviously there's a lot of things that need to be answered with this third one, especially, uh, with what the Crowns gave us, you know, uh, uh, the, the Crowns DLC when it came out, um, you know, and the fact that it essentially allows you to transcend the curse and become not an undead anymore, but an immortal, you know, because you can still die, but you don't go hollow anymore, so you're essentially immortal because, you know, every time you come back, you don't lose a part of yourself, so... That's essentially, you know, I, what I always thought the crowns were. They were just a way, they, you know, they took the curse and used it to make the, uh, the, uh, the, the monarch, I guess, immortal. Since, you know, if you gather all four of the crowns and you manage to, um, you know, get that effect, then you are a true monarch, I suppose. Even a, an even greater monarch than some, than a lot of Cinder. But yeah, um, back to the fucking trailer. Uh, there is one thing I do want to address, because I found it really interesting, and that's my, and that's why I wanted to use this footage, just to make this one fucking point. Also, because I like the Ivory King DLC, it's, it's a cool area. Um, I, you know what, one year on, I'm still, over a year on, I'm still calling this DLC, because that's what it is to me, you know, that's what it was to me when it came out. So this was all, this is always going to be DLC to me, even though I'm playing the score of the first in edition. Anyway, uh, one thing from the trailer I do want to address was uh, Aldrich. Was it Aldrich? One sec, guys, I need to check my notes. Uh... Yeah, Aldrich Saint of the Deep. What I find really interesting about that creature that we saw in the trailer is, you know, the Black Tar Monster. I got a real, like, chaotic vibe from it, like uh, like it was some kind of demon. Because if there's one thing we know, or at least I think it's been alluded to or, or hinted at or confirmed, one of them, is that the Chaos Flame that the Witch of Isleth created burns infinitely. It never goes out. Unlike the, the, the first flame. Which you know, obviously, will die eventually. I believe it was sta it was like, it's like being stated or or some something has been said about it where the f where the chaos flame will never die out, will never stop burning. So she kind of you know the witch of Isleth kind of completed her objective there. She made an infinite be an infinite flame, but just wrong kind. Blah, 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 blah. So it makes me you know it makes me uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, does that mean that the that demons will play a part in this just like they did in Dark Souls One? You know. Uh, like, you know, proper demons, not like the Smelter Demon, who was obviously created by the Iron King and, uh, Eagle or Agel. Uh, you know, this is, like, proper demons, like the Bed of Chaos in Dark Souls 1, even though that was an awful boss fight. Uh, and that kind of stuff, you know, and obviously, uh, in Dark Souls 2, we've got the Ivory King DLC, where you go to the, you know, the, uh, the old Chaos to fight the Ivory King. Um, because... You know, this pretty much this DLC pretty much confirms that the, the the Chaos Flame is still burning, and you know is still having an effect here in Dark Souls 2. So, and obviously it's something really important that they can't forget about. So my thought, I I actually think that Aldrich is supposed to be is related to the Chaos Flame in some way. It's some kind of demon. Because looking at it, you know, when it moves and when it just flops, it's just like it's it's black tar. It's literally a formless liquid creature, which. Would make sense, you know, if it was some kind of, uh, of a demon of chaos, 
you know, a chaotic form that is ever shifting and changing. So I thought that was, a, you know, I thought that was really interesting in the trailer. Uh, I wanted to address that first because that's probably the most interesting thing that I, I saw in the trailer. Next, I guess we'll talk about uh, Fire Runs Undead Legion, I think it was, wasn't it? Obviously, the Abyss Watchers. Now, obviously, we know who these guys are. You know, they're uh, they're an offshoot or, a, you know, descendants of Artorius. They're inspired by him in some way. You can obviously tell just by looking at the sword and, you know, the sword they were holding and listening to their name. That, you know, it's heavily influenced by Artorius and everyone loves Artorius. You know, he's a favourite from the first game, so that makes sense. Um, so that's pretty cool. You know, I, I, I honestly don't know what's going to be happening there. I mean... How the Abyss is going to play a part in this game will be interesting to see. Uh, especially after Manus and Nishandra. But, you know, if Dark Souls 2 taught us anything else, it's that even when Manus was destroyed, he didn't die. He just split into fragments. So, you know, the Abyss is still there. The, 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 ch the children of Dark are still there and everything. So... We shall have to see what happens there, but I'm really, I can't wait to see uh, the story related to all that. I can't wait to see what happened to Nishandra and, and what's their fucking names? Alsana, Elana, and, uh, I've totally forgot. Sorry guys, I don't remember the fourth one. But you, 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 you know what I'm getting at, right? That all four of the Children of Dark in this game were fragments of Manus. By the way, I don't know what happened here. I parried this guy and killed him, but he was still alive. Um, but not, he, but he wasn't alive. He just, yeah, he was trapped in the parry animation. Um, but yeah, so it will be really interesting to see how that um, is related to this, and <coughs> if that's the reason for. Uh, I keep forgetting his name. Check my notes. Uh, if that's the reason for Farron's Undead Legion, or whatever, I think that was it, what he was saying in the trailer, right? You know, the guys who were holding Artorius' sword, it's, of, you know, the Abyss Watchers. So, we'll have to see if they are in some way formed to maybe combat the Children of Dark, or what? Because as we know, going undead isn't isn't as much as a stigma in Dark Souls 3 as it is in number two, 1 and 2. Because, you know, it's been going on for so long that, uh, you know, based on the stuff we've been seeing, people are, like, proud to be undead. You know, it's a much more accepted thing. I, I get, it seems like in this game, you know, it's it's not like oh, the, you know, he's undead. Put you know, lock him away in an asylum somewhere, or put him in a circular tractor forever, be run down by a fucking chariot. You know, it's not like it doesn't seem like undead hate is anywhere near as bad in this uh, in Dark Souls Three. So that's going to be interesting to see how it all plays a part, and it will be also interesting to see if. Well, Aldia has to make a return. Aldia has to appear in Dark Souls 3 or, or some form of him, you know? Uh, because obviously he... Or, yeah, as we know in Dark Souls 2, as we can tell, Aldia knows way more than he's letting on about the cycle and everything, you know? He knows way more than he's telling us. I mean, that's pretty much a given, you know? How did he How did he discover the secret to exist outside of the cycle as whatever the hell he is, you know, a giant tree demon or whatever? But I wonder about what he is as well. Like, is his form somehow related to the Flame of Chaos? Because he looks, you know... I mean, when you fight him, he's got the fire around him and... And also, the Bed of Chaos was made out of, like, tree branches and shit. And, and you know, and wood. And, well, it was it was weirdness. <laughs> you know, weird tree branches, I guess you could say. And Aldia, you know, he's got a bit of a Bed of Chaos vibe to him. And when you look at him, you know, his attacks, uh, the way he looks, how he's got fireballs and shit, so... Aldia must... I wonder if Aldia is some kind of demon, maybe. But that seems like... I mean, I don't know. Because that seems like kind of a cop-out, if I'm honest. I would... Because, you know, obviously the lore is all established. But I would like to see, like, maybe... What Aldia... How Aldia managed to exist out of the cycle is not related to the Flame of Chaos. You know, it's something entirely different. But I don't know if it's going to be that, because obviously he looks a lot like uh, the Bed of Chaos. You know, he gives you that that vibe. So, mm. we'll have to see what, what happens there with Aldi. I'm not 100% sure what, it's, what he's going to be. I hope it's not just like, you know, oh, it was the Flame of Chaos and something happened with that. And, you know, shit went down and I'm now I'm immortal and I exist as this monster. Well... You know, I, I guess I would be fine with that, because, it, it you know, it looks like it and it... it you know, it makes sense, because looking at him, I wouldn't mind seeing something, so a new idea there for what he is, and how he is what he is, maybe related to the Primordial Serpents, or, or, uh, 
you know, whatever. Because obviously it can't be anything related to souls. Because as we know in Dark Souls, <laughs> souls are fleeting, you know. They they exist to literally be, uh, uh, you know, recycled by the, the first flame. Unless there's some new lore introduced in Dark Souls 3 that changes that rule. But as far as we know so far, every soul will eventually peter out and you'll become hollow. So we'll have to see what happens with that. I honestly don't know what Aldea is, and I'm really curious to learn, and hopefully we will find out in Dark Souls 3. He has to be in it somewhere, come on. I mean, it, it, it's pretty much been stated, you know, in this game, it's pretty much obvious that he exists outside of the cycle. He's not part of it. He's not affected by light or dark. And he knows way more about the cycle than we do. So, yeah, he has to be in Dark Souls 3. If he's not, I'll be massively disappointed. Uh... And on the subject of us, our player character in this game, the immortal, as I that's what I that's how I refer to it. Um, the character now, by the way, the first immortal, because you pretty much are. You know, like I said, that's what that's the point of the crowns. That's what you are to become. You become an immortal. Um, pardon me. So, the immortal has to be in Dark Souls Three as well, because I'm wondering if my theory on how it was supposed to work, uh, uh, everything was. The crowns were created as a way for an undead to exist outside of the cycle and see Aldia's goal through because I think what Aldia wants isn't what, um, not exactly what Karth wanted because Karth didn't see past an age of dark. He only wanted an age of dark. Whereas I think Aldia sees past an age of dark. He wants the first flame to die, but he, do, he wants to, s but I think Aldia, my guess is maybe an age of dark isn't infinite doesn't go on forever eventually the age of dark will end and a new age will begin and it won't be bound by the the rules of fire or light uh, uh of dark or light sorry light or dark sorry so that's what i think aldia wants he wants the age of light to end and that's the immortal's job because the thing is as an immortal as well you won't go hollow during the age of dark you'll be able to watch over it and make sure that no one dead can ever link the flame i don't think it's i don't think it's truly evil what he wants i just think he wants to see man advance to its next stage um so, you know, that, that there's that, and I think that's a really cool idea, and I really hope that they, you know, that, that that's the angle they're taking with Dark Souls 3. It's that Aldia doesn't want the same thing as Karth. He wants a similar thing as Karth. He wants the first flame to die. He wants an Age of, fire to, uh, age of Dark to begin. But what about when the Age of Dark ends? What happens then? You know? If, the, if, the, if it goes on long enough... And you know, maybe maybe you need influence from the immortal to change things. You know, maybe without the without an immortal, it would just be an age of dark. But with an immortal who can't go hollow, they could lead man to their next stage of existence. So you know, this is all really cool stuff to speculate, and I this is all, and I really love talking about this shit because I love the story of these games. Uh, but yeah, when it comes down to it, I honestly don't know. Um, you know what we're going to get? I've got ideas. You know, ideas I would like to see happen, but at the end of the day, I can't be sure about any of this, you know. I, But, well, I can be sure that the Immortal has to play some role in Dark Souls 3, you know. They released this DLC for Dark Souls 2, they made such a big deal about it, they made, you know, they made so many changes to how the fucking curse works, how the Undead Curse actually works, and the fact that there's an exploit, in a, like a get out of jail, you know, a get out of hollow free card, that has to be a factor in Dark Souls 3, it has to be. So with that being said, I don't know. I can't wait to see. But yeah, so... Uh, the Lord of Cinder returning, you know, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Now, you know, it's fairly easy to understand that Gwyn was only the first Lord of Cinder. He wasn't the only Lord of Cinder. He was just the first one to link the flame. But that would imply that every single undead who comes along and links the fight becomes a Lord of Cinder. Because remember, the thing is, before we only had Lords of Dark. You know, Lords... Uh, you know, um, uh, dark Lords. Now we've got Lords of Cinder. Makes sense, you know? Every every undead who didn't link the fire but was powerful enough to exist for a while after it linked became a, 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 a dark lord. And, you know, every undead who links the fire becomes a lord of Cinder. It all makes sense. But, yeah, guys, um, that was everything I wanted to say in my speculation about the Dark Souls 3 story. I can't wait for this fucking game. I can't wait to see what we get, let alone, you know, the boss fights and the gameplay. I can't wait for the goddamn plot and see what, you know, what's going on there. And... You know how all this will turn out, and how the uh, how the franchise will end, and what will happen to the world and everything, and how you know how the ages of fire and dark will change. Hopefully, it'll all change. They can't keep this cycle going for a third game. I don't think they intend to. But yeah, guys, 
I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about this because I certainly enjoyed talking about it. I love this subject and I'll see you all in the next. And that's the end of that video. Thank you all very much for watching it. I'd just like to apologize for the rather abrupt ending of my voice uh, commentary there. Uh, I'm not sure why that happened. I actually recorded, uh, when I recorded that commentary, it was like two or three seconds longer than that. Uh, but the uh, for some reason, the editing software decided to cut the last part off. So the ending of the commentary was a little bit abrupt. I apologize for that. But I would have had to re-record the uh, whole commentary to fix it. Uh, and... You know, I said a lot. Uh, I said some pretty good stuff in the video, so I didn't want to have to like erase that and restart. So I hope the abrupt ending is cool with you guys, because I thought I raised some pretty good speculation. But yeah, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Um, uh, leave me a like if you enjoyed it. Check out my channel for more content if you're curious. Subscribe for future stuff, and if you think you may be interested in this video, then please share it with them. I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, guys, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate your time. Now shall see you all in the next video. I am out.